The great thing about fall is that it's perfect for going for walks in the woods. And by walks in the woods, I mean going out with friends and getting stoned. It's really fun to just grab some friends, grab a pot, and smoke up. But last night was different. I'm still a little freaked out right now. Bear with me. I'll try to fill you in as best I can. So I got a call from my friend Dave, asking me if I'm going down to smoke up. I think it was around five. I grabbed my north face and waited for him to drive up. Dave's a pretty chill guy. We go to university together. I think he's a sociology major or something. I don't know. What I do know is that he's a good hookup for cannabis. Guy's always calling me to smoke. He showed up in his beat-up, shitty car, and we drove out to the woods near my place. Why not? You're not judging me, are you? <laughs> anyway, we went to our usual smoke spot, a small clearing in the woods. There's a stump in the middle of it, and we usually sit on it and smoke. But that's not important. So we got to the spot, and it's completely deserted as usual. It's not too dark out yet, perfect for our evening plans. Sun was just starting to go down. After sparking a few bowls and spacing out, I noticed that Dave had wandered away. And the problem with Dave is, when he's left to his own devices, he might end up hurting himself. Normally he's pretty easy to find, but it was getting dark, so I had to go and find him. Dave! Dave! I yelled, walking through the trees. No sign of him. The woods aren't that big. He couldn't have gone far. I tried doubling back to the clearing. Maybe he just wandered back there. When I got there, I didn't see Dave. But on the stump was a pumpkin. Given that Halloween was only a few days ago, I figured it was just someone throwing it away. After all, the clearing isn't that far into the woods. Maybe they wanted to buy a degrade it or something like that but it hadn't been tipped over or carelessly tossed there. It looked like it had been set there. As I got closer, I realized it wasn't just a pumpkin. It was carved into a sinister-looking jack-o'-lantern. I can't even describe it. It just looked... evil. There was even a candle inside it, illuminating it in the dusky light. I felt really uneasy. <laughs> Dave, don't tell me this is your pumpkin. I tried calling to my friend. No response. I looked back at the pumpkin. I swear it was staring at me. I couldn't shake it. Suddenly I heard a rustle behind me. I thought it was Dave trying to screw with me. I figured he put the pumpkin there. Whirling around, I realized I was wrong. It wasn't Dave. It was some strange hooded figure, wearing what looked like a black robe. This guy was probably seven feet tall. I froze. Who the hell was this guy? Why was he watching us? I reached for my flashlight I always kept handy in Dave and my wood tips, but the guy ran. I tried chasing him, yelling for him to stop. Of course he didn't. This guy was fast, nimble like some goddamn animal. Out of nowhere, I felt a hand grab me from behind. I immediately swung a fist, connecting it with whatever or whoever grabbed me. When I turned around, Dave was lying on the ground rubbing his jaw. What the hell, man? He sat up, still nursing his new injury. Dave, I was just looking for you, and this guy in the, in the pumpkin... Dude, what are you talking about? He interrupted. Rising to his feet, he brushed off the dirt from his jacket. You just took off running. I just wanted to stop you before you got hurt or something, he explained. I didn't see anyone. I pulled out my flashlight and shined it in the direction the strange figure went. No sign of anyone being there. Dave motioned toward the clearing. Come on, dude, let's get out of here. You gotta watch yourself when you're smoking. When we got back to the clearing, I pointed to the stump. 
there was the pumpkin still there. I wasn't going crazy, but it was different. It was all rotted and moldy. This is the pumpkin? Dude, this thing is gross. I was confused. I swear, it wasn't like this before. There was no sign of the candle in it, no sign of it even being a recognizable pumpkin in the last few days. Thinking back on when I first saw it, I don't know why I didn't take a picture or something just to prove it to him. Regardless, the pumpkin was a mushy pile of rot. It wasn't the jack-o'-lantern I saw earlier. Dave couldn't tell I was freaked out. All right, uh, let, let's get out of here, I nodded. Getting back to the car, he asked, You okay? You look really pale. I tried to tell him about the figure I had seen, but I knew he wouldn't listen. Can we come back tomorrow? I think I dropped something back there. He offered to go back and find it, but I waved him off. It's dark. I'll find it in the morning. He didn't seem convinced, but with the way I reacted to the rotted pumpkin, he knew I wasn't in the mood to go back and look. We arrived at my apartment complex, and burning on the front porch was a freshly carved jack-o'-lantern. Inside was a candle, illuminating its smiling pumpkin face for all to see. Dave pointed to it. Cool, dude. I didn't notice that earlier. I did my best to keep my composure. That's because it wasn't there before. I got out of the car, and Dave yelled, Calm yourself, buddy. (laughs) Relax. And with that, he sped off. Something wasn't right. That pumpkin couldn't be a coincidence. I waited for Dave to be gone to take a look at the pumpkin. It looked like a normal pumpkin. Orange, round, carved out with a goofy face, casting an ominous shadow on the steps leading to the front door. I didn't think much of it until I realized there was a piece of paper taped to the back of it. I took it, my hand quivering. Written in shaky handwriting, read, We'll see you tomorrow. Don't be late. After the events that transpired yesterday, I was kind of scared to go back to the woods. But I had to go back. I wanted to go back when it was still light out. So I called him around noon to go back. One of the worst parts about not having a car, having to rely on other people. And Dave, well, he's not the uh, most reliable. I called him at noon, he showed up at two. Well, late or not, I wanted to figure out what the hell had happened. As I walked out of my apartment, I noticed something odd. The pumpkin from yesterday was gone. Dave didn't seem to notice. I did. We got into the car and drove off to the woods. Conversation was light. So, what did you drop back there? I try to think of something to say that would merit needing to go back. Problem is, I'm not quick on my feet. Ah, uh, my keys. Dave chuckled. <laughs> Man, we just came out from your place. I think you've got your keys. The tension began to thicken. Dave could tell something was up. Um, I mean, um, my work keys. He smiled. He could tell I was lying, but he didn't want to say anything. Arriving at the woods, Dave turned to me, asking if I knew where I'd dropped my keys. I needed an excuse to be able to explore freely. Um, I don't know, dude. Somewhere out there. We should split up. He nodded and started off to the left. I began walking toward where I ran off the day prior. The stump in the clearing was abandoned. There was no sign of the man from the night prior. Even with the light of day, not even so much as a branch seemed out of order. As I wandered deeper, I thought I heard voices. 
things. Faint at first, I couldn't quite make them out. Maybe this is the same guys as last time. I decided to proceed with caution. We'll get him soon. The harvest will be wonderful. Yes, we just need him delivered at the right time. I ducked down, walking slowly toward the voices. One was deep and ominous, where the other was more nasal, almost like Dave's voice. Hiding among the trees, I saw two figures wearing similar black robes to the guy yesterday. They had their backs to me, so I inched closer. Is he aware? He saw me last night, but I was able to escape. This was the guy from last night. I wanted to get closer to approach them and find out why they were watching me. But what was I going to do? I had nothing to apprehend them with. Should I call the cops? <laughs> what would I even tell them? I backed away slowly. I wanted to find Dave. Maybe the two of us could apprehend these guys. But... If you've ever been walking in the woods backwards, you realized how hard it is to be stealthy. Of course, I stepped on a branch. The inadvertent snap echoed loudly through the woods, and I saw the figures whirl around. I started to run, not looking back. There was a good chance they were gaining on me, but I had no idea. I just kept running. It wouldn't do me any good to look back. I just wanted to get away from these guys. Their talk of the harvest frightened me. What was it? When I got back to the clearing, I blindly ran into Dave, knocking him to the ground. Easy there, dude. I helped him to his feet and noticed a piece of black fabric clinging to his jacket. I wanted to tell him about the figures I saw and what I heard, but the fibers threw me off. Was Dave one of them? He bent over to the grass and leaves littering the floor. Hey, found your keys, dude. He held up a keychain that was definitely my work keys. Hmm. I don't remember dropping them. Um, thanks. I said, apprehensively taking them from him. He motioned to the car. Want to get out of here? Or do you want to? He reached into his pocket and pulled out a bag of herbs. <laughs> Get straight up baked. I warily looked at the bag. Looked like pot to me. Ah, <sighs> what hurt could it do? I shrugged. Dave pulled out a pipe from his jacket, packed it and said, Dude, you're going to have some weird ass experiences out here. Why don't you spark it first and I'll make sure you don't go all schizo. He waved his hands near his head, taunting me. I put the pipe to my lips, sparked a lighter and inhaled deeply. The smoke filled my lungs and burned. A different burn, as I remember. The last thing I remember is Dave nodding and smiling. Everything started going hazy. And then... I woke up, at home. I wanted to tell you about this to try and help me figure out what's going on. When I woke up, I splashed some water on my face and noticed some weird markings on my wrist and chest, just below my neckline. They looked like Celtic symbols. When I did some googling, I found out that the ones on my wrist are the Triskele, representing the sea, sky and land, and the one on my chest is the Triquerta representing the unity of physicality, mentality, and spirituality. I'm not sure what these mean, or even if I'm getting them right. I'm kind of freaked out. I'm afraid these people are going to come for me. I don't remember coming home. They know where I live. The scariest part? Sitting on my dining room table in my apartment was another pumpkin. It was not carved this time, but it was hollowed out. Inside was a lit candle. How it didn't go out with the top on, I have no idea. The candle went out the minute I 
opened the lid. I'm sitting here in the dark. The pumpkin that was on my table is gone. I tossed it out the window the first chance I got. I half expected there to be some kind of note, but there wasn't. Just the pumpkin. The markings on my arms, they're not coming off. I tried scrubbing them as hard as I could, still nothing. I think they might actually be tattooed on me. I'll try rewinding things to fill you in. A million things are running through my mind. What is Dave doing with these guys? Is he one of them? Does he have those tattoos? I guess I never really paid that much attention. How did they get into my apartment? What's with the pumpkins? What about the cops? I've got to be careful. First thing I did after getting rid of the pumpkin was to find my gun. Dave never knew about it, so I guess I've got that going for me. It was still there, a 9mm handgun. I checked it to make sure the bullets were still there. Maybe I've watched too many movies, but they were. I stuffed it into the back of my jeans. I needed protection to do what I intended. I also packed a bag with some clothes and personal items. I wasn't going back home. I wasn't going to class. I was going to the cops. Screw going to class. Screw pumpkins. And especially screw Dave. So I don't have a car. That was a problem. The police station is a few miles away. Luckily, I've got a bike. I hate riding into town just because of sheer distance, but I was too full of adrenaline to figure out what was going on. When I walked out my front door, I saw that everyone on the block was taking down their Halloween decorations. But here's just the thing. There were rocks lining the walkway up to my apartment. Not all the same, but definitely meant to show something. They bore all the markings that were on my chest and wrists. Just lined up neatly, clearly put there by someone who knew I was there. I grabbed one and ran. The rock I grabbed seemed heavier than it looked. I threw it in my jacket, tucked it under my arm, and got on my bike. With this, I could prove to the police that something was happening. I rode hard and fast, trying to get there as quickly as I could. When I got there, I locked up my bike, held the stone in my hand, and looked at it. It seemed warm, as if it were alive. Weird. I walked into the station and was greeted by a blinding white light. The walls seemed sterile and clean. The entire office seemed fake, like something out of a movie set. No prisoners were sitting on the bench, it was just a police station. I walked up to the front desk and told them that I needed to speak to a detective. I was told to wait. So I waited and waited, and waited for what seemed like hours. Finally, a detective came up to me. He had red hair, a mustache, and he kind of squinted menacingly as I stood up, as if he was sizing me up. The detective introduced himself as Detective Dawson. <laughs> Whatever, I didn't care. I just wanted to find out what the hell was going on. I explained everything to him, leaving out the part about smoking pot. I said we were just going for a walk or something when we came across this stuff in the clearing. I showed him the rock and the tattoos. The whole time he seemed skeptical, like I was just some kid messing with him. He picked up the rock, looked it over, saw the designs. He tossed it back to me. The force of the rock hitting me in the chest kind of threw me back, almost like he meant to throw it at me. Kid, we get shit like this all the time. It's probably just some bullshit prank from your friend. I guess we can keep an eye out for things, but between you and me, I think you're full of shit. He stood up and motioned toward the door. So I figured if they wouldn't believe me, maybe they would if someone ended up dead. I just hoped it wasn't me. 
As I got back to my bike, I ran my finger over the gun in my waistband. If I saw anything out of the ordinary, I was going to shoot first and ask questions later. I needed a place to stay. I would normally go to Dave's to hide out, but that wasn't happening. I rode my bike up to a... In fact, it's probably best I don't say where I am staying. I locked up my bike in the front, walked in, and said I needed a room. They asked how long. I said indefinitely. I didn't want to give them a credit card, but I had to for incidentals. I swear the clerk saw the tattoos on my arm and was staring the whole time. After getting my key, I made sure to double the lock. I probably shouldn't be using the computer, but I want to see if you guys can help me. I'm so scared. I'm sitting in the dark so they can't tell I'm here. The windows are closed and locked. The curtains are drawn. With the clerk staring, I'm worried. Should I keep moving? <laughs>